go to different schools, but I think we have the same kind of problems. This year, our class is in a terrible fix, and I thought if I could tell you about it, maybe you could help us. Well, let's see. Why, we could start right here in this class. I remember it was just about a month ago, and Miss Baldwin was reviewing us for a quiz. Is, will deal with the feudal system in Europe. Now you'll find this material on page 106 through 136. <laughs> Jim. Yes, Miss Baldwin. Put it down, please. Put what down, Miss Baldwin? Jim. Yes, Miss Baldwin. All right. The next part of our quiz will deal with the beginning of the Industrial Revolution. First, we will review the Jim. <laughs> Well, Miss Baldwin, this chair just suddenly collapsed with me. <laughs> Frank, help him up. Oh, oh, God. This, this one in school is getting me pretty dangerous, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, Jim. We can't have any more of this. If you can't settle down and act your age, then I'll have to ask you to leave the room. Well, Miss Baldwin, I haven't done anything. The chair just fell over with me. I don't see how that's my fault. That's enough, Jim. Jim Brewster was like that. He was really a pretty smart boy, I guess. But there was just something in him that made him always want to be the center of attention. Oh, I suppose some of us did secretly admire him for doing the things he did and still staying out of trouble, even though he did interfere with classwork. At first, what he did seemed amusing. But as time went on, well, let me tell you what happened next. It was the time of year for the junior class play tryout. Most of the kids had been weeded out, and only the ones who were being considered for parts were there. Surprised to see Jim Brewster? Jim had talent, and for a while we thought Mrs. Jackson was going to give him the lead. Mrs. Jackson directed the junior play. And she did it afternoons after school, on her own time. Sometimes I suspect it tired her out. All right, let's take the living room scene in Act Two. Marie, will you read the part of Lorna Dugan? Harry, you read the part of Henry Carter. Where are we supposed to start, Miss Jackson? We can start with Henry's speech there on the top of page 34. Look, Lorna, it's all right with me if you see other men, but sometimes I think. Henry, Henry, you know there's no one but you. The others are just faces. They don't mean a thing. Henry, do I really mean so much to you? Am I supposed to do what it says here? Yes, go ahead. You mean everything to me. <laughs> uh, Jim, you seem to think you can read this scene so well. Let's see you try it. Thanks, Harry. Marie, you'll read the lines with Jim. Look, Lorna, it's all right with me if you see other men, but sometimes I think... Henry, you know there's no one but you. <laughs> Jim, that'll be enough, Jim. <laughs> George, will you read the lines with Marie? <laughs> look, look, Lorna. <laughs> I don't think we'll go on with tryouts this afternoon. Well, 
What do you know? Tryouts are over already. Well, what did you expect, funny boy? Jim's wise guy behavior was beginning to wear a little thin with those of us who were exposed to it. Poor Mrs. Jackson, who already had a headache, just couldn't take the one that Jim was creating for her. And so, the class play got off to a poor start. But enough wasn't enough for Jim. It seemed as though he just couldn't stop until he'd finally gotten us all in a bad light. I remember it was at a party at Martha Harvey's house. And they were just serving refreshments. I saw a guy do that. I'll bet you can. I'll just bet you you can't do it. I bet I can. I don't think you can. Okay, just watch. Yes, yes. Maybe I hadn't better. Uh, I told you you couldn't do it. All right, I'll show you. Hey, look out! <laughs> well, what's the matter? It's not the end of the world. I'll buy you some more glasses, Miss Harvey. Like you getting clumsy or something? You tripped me. Oh, I'm just sick about this glass. I never will be able to replace it. I'm sorry, Mother. I don't know why you used your good crystal when you knew those young roughnecks were coming. Oh, I wouldn't call them all roughnecks. Well, a bunch of smart alecks, then. Daddy. Most of the kids acted all right, and Jim and Frank didn't mean to break the glass. Well, maybe not. But it makes you wonder about kids nowadays. In my day, when you were invited to a party, everybody was supposed to act like ladies and gentlemen. You can see how things were going. At first, it was just acting silly, when most of us really wanted to review for that quiz. And then the teachers began to think of us as that class because of the nuisances that some of the kids were making of themselves. And after the party, well, some of the parents began to wonder too. But what happened later really cooked our goose. It seems Jim had practically run out of new ideas for ways of calling attention to himself in school. And so, one night, with the help of some of his friends, he hatched up this plan that was really daring, even for him. People were pretty surprised, all right, when they came to school the next day. Jim and his helpers had created a sensation. The big sign was about all you could see. And it was evident that someone was going to have a difficult and dangerous time getting it down. Some joke. Maybe some of the members of the junior class got a kick out of it. But some of the other classes didn't think it was funny at all. They thought it was an eyesore on the whole school. Our principal, I guess you know, was fit to be tied. But even worse was the way most of us in the class felt. That big sign, like a badge of dishonor for all the town to see. Yes, the word really got around about the junior class. And that's what made us mad. The word that got around wasn't a true picture of the junior class as a class at all. It left out the good things we did, the fine play we put on, the important things we learned, and all the studying we did. No, our reputation belonged to Jim Brewster and the little gang around him who still thought he was pretty funny. After school that afternoon, the principal called the officers of the junior class into a meeting. Several of our teachers were there. I'm afraid this class has put itself in a bad light. The stunt that was pulled last night has made it very embarrassing for the whole school and for me personally. I've had several telephone calls from people who want to know what kind of a school we're running here. And frankly, I'd like to know myself. What we want to know is, what's behind all this? There's nothing behind it, Mr. Scott. It's just a bunch of smart Alex showing off. There's, there's nothing malicious about it. Do you know who the ringleader is? 
Do you, Kay? Yes, we know. It doesn't take news like that very long to get around. You could understand my problem, can't you? As far as the people outside of this school are concerned, I am responsible for what goes on here. When some members of the class do something to disgrace the class and the school, it's up to the other members of the class to do something about it. Well, what can we do? Have any of you ever complained to these people who show off? Or do you really encourage them by thinking they're cute? Have you ever tried anything like ignoring them? Why do you suppose these people show off? Don't they have enough to do? You asked me what you could do. I think you class officers should get together and discuss this problem among yourselves and come up with your own suggestions. Then we'll meet here Wednesday afternoon and work this problem out together. Thank you all for coming. Well, that's where we stand now. In a few minutes, our junior class officers are going to meet with a faculty committee. If you were in our shoes, what would you do about the show-offs? What do you think? 